Today we are continuing with the distributive property. It's such an important uh, fundamental piece of mathematics. We're taking two days for it. Here's a little visual of how the distributive property works with these arrows. We're going to get into it a little more in depth today. Expand and simplify. So you have a handout and you can fill this in as we go along. So here are our first uh, part A and B that we're going to do. When you distribute, what you're doing is you're eliminating the brackets. Let's draw some arrows here. So I'm taking the negative x because the negative, remember the sign always goes with the term that, so this is a positive 5, these two go together. Those pieces always go together. So I have to take the negative x as a whole, the whole negative x, and multiply it here and multiply it to the 5. So negative x times negative 2x, let's do that first negative x times negative 2x, so numbers times numbers, so this is really a negative 1 in front here. Negative 1 times 2 is going to give me a negative 2. Now we do x times x, and that will be an x squared. So for the next one, I'm going to take negative x or negative 1x, and I'm going to multiply it by a positive 5. So those are the only thing I can do here really here is the positive is going to become a negative and I have the 5 is my only constant or coefficient so that stays a 5 and I only have that 1x there so negative 5x I just kind of take the 5 and the x and put them together now are these like terms are these two uh, the negative 2x squared and the negative 5x are they like terms can I add them together so remember what like terms are an x squared shape is a, a square that's an x squared so if I had negative two of those and a single x is the rectangle that's an x so I cannot put those together so those are unlike terms so I have to stop here now let's look at B these are nested brackets we've done these before um, but I'm just going to recap it here nested brackets means we have brackets inside of brackets so usually the square bracket is the outer one and the round bracket is the inner one so these round ones are nested inside the square ones when we have nested brackets it means this is kind of a, a clue about how the order of operations we have to follow so in this case the first thing I'm going to have to do is here I'm going to have to distribute the negative sign into this round bracket first that has to be done first oh, let's see this purple okay so I'm going to take actually is green I'm going to take this negative in front of the bracket and it has to go into the bracket like that so my first line I have the four I'm not touching that right now and that W is is not coming into the bracket only the negative is so that's a negative 2 or subtract 2 and now the negative comes over here and that's negative 5w so once that's done now I have one set of brackets I'm still following bed mass so I'm still ha I still have to consider um, the order of operations because of bed mass I'm gonna have to do the brackets first those square brackets have to be done first is there anything that can be done inside those brackets and yes, we have some like terms. We have these like terms right here. So inside the brackets, I've got a W minus 5W. So W minus 5W, what's that? That's negative 4W. And then the constant is minus 2. And I could change these brackets to round here, actually, if I want to. I don't have to keep them square because I'm down to one set, so they can be round. Now, um, we look back up at bed mass we finished that B there's no exponents but there is division multiplication and that is actually multiplication of the 4 that's in front so my next step is going to be to distribute that negative 4 first into negative 4 W that will give me negative 16 W and now the 4 into the negative 2 is negative 8 so that's the end of that question. I'm just going to show you another way that you could have done the question. Let's, I'm going to go, I'm going to erase my bed mass here so I can write beside the first line. 
So let's say right here, you didn't recognize that you could take care of those W's inside the bracket. You didn't see this step. What you could have done was distributed the four in right away and you would have got four W, four times negative two is negative eight and four times negative five W is negative 20 W or subtract 20 W. And now we have like terms here. So the like terms are the 4w minus 20w, and then minus 8 is a constant, and 4w minus 20w gives us the same answer that we had here. So if you didn't, in this case, if you didn't see the uh, collection of like terms first, you still would have got the right answer. We have two more questions here on this slide. Looking at C, again we have nested brackets for C, so what do we do first? The first thing we're going to do is distribute the negative 3. That's the first thing that has to be done in that bracket. So I'm going to distribute the negative 3 to the 2m by multiplication, and I'm also going to multiply both negative 3s together. So I have 2 on the outside stays there. I'm not ready to work with that yet. And inside I've got now negative 6m plus 9. And remember up here, what I put up here in the top left, we're, we got rid of those round brackets now. We've eliminated those. And then the 4m, we haven't done anything with that yet. Okay, so my next step is going to be, uh, remember what we did before, we can either clean up the like terms in the brackets first, which is really what we should do, but if we forget, we could distribute. But we're gonna clean up the like terms inside the brackets. So I have a negative 6m, and a positive 4m. So how many m's do you have now? So we've got the 2 in the front and negative 6m plus 4m is negative 2m and then plus 9. So again if you didn't notice that you could have distributed already you'll still get the same answer. Now I'm going to distribute again this 2 gets multiplied here numbers times numbers so the 2 times 2 is 4 of course it's a negative 4 and letters times letters I just have that m and now 2 times 9 is 18 positive 18 so there's my answer for C okay now let's look at D so in D fractions okay fractions first of all there's no decimals in the question so Actually, there are no decimals in the question, so there can't be decimals in your solution. So don't even think about changing, the, getting out your calculator and doing 1 divided by 6. I won't even mark it if you do that. So what do we do? Let me erase this up here so you can see a little better. What do we do? We're going to look at that 3 and that one, that 3 and 1 fifths. That's a mixed number. We have to change mixed to improper fractions. We have to do that first. So that's our first step. What is 3 and 1 fifths as an improper fraction? Remember how to do that? We do 3 times 5. Okay, my denominator is going to be a 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Then we add on the 1. That's a 16. But there's also an A here. So the A I can either put on the top like this. I can write it like that. Or I can put it... Oops. I can put it kind of in the middle like it is in the question. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle. If it's in the middle, we know that means it's really in the numerator. You don't have, but you don't put it in the denominator. So that's all I did. So I'm just going to rewrite the question here. I'm going to leave all this alone. 1 half a minus 1 half. So again, looking at that, this 1 half a right here, um, when you have, you can either write um, the letter when you have a one for the numerator you can put it the letter directly in place of the one because there's an invisible one here so you can do that but I find it's usually easier to leave the X off to the side so that we that we it's easier to find like terms if we leave it like that when you erase those lines okay next line what am I going to do next okay now we're ready to distribute We've got brackets, but there's nothing to do inside any of the brackets. So I'm going to multiply first 1 sixth times 16 over 5. So we remember how to multiply fractions? We multiply straight across the top. So 16 times 1 is 16. 
and straight across the bottom. 16 times 5 is 30. And this there's an A here. The next one we're going to do is 1 6 times 2. Now that's really a 2 over 1. Remember, a, an integer it can always be written as a fraction, so it's 2 over 1. So I multiply straight across the top. So 1 times 2, or, or, yep, 1 times 2, that's our numerator. That was a positive there. That's going to be a 2 over the denominator is a 6 times 1, 6. Now I'm going to, on my next line, I'm going to change that to 1 third. Or you could change it to 1 third now if you want, but that's what I'll do next. Okay, let's keep distributing. The positive one third comes into the one half. We multiply straight across the top. One times one is one. Three times two is six. And this one has an A. And one more. We distribute, we multiply one third times negative one half. Numerator times numerator, so that's a minus, will be a one. Denominator times denominator, again, is a six. So in my next line, I'm going to reduce these fractions, and I'll just put it all in one color now. Let's go with uh, red. 16 over 30. Those numbers are both even, so I know for sure I can reduce them. I'm going to divide them both by 2. Divide the top by 2. Divide the bottom by 2. Don't worry about the A. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then I have an A. And 2 sixths, remember this one reduces. This is 1 third plus 1 sixth A minus 1 sixth. Okay, what's next? I think I might run out of room here. So I have to um, collect my like terms. So here's an A and here's an A. So those two are like terms. So I'm going to put them together. 8 over 15a plus 1 sixth a and my other like terms are the constants 1 third and minus 1 sixth are constants so I'll put those two together that's a positive 1 third remember to take the sign with the term then that's a minus 1 sixth so now we have to have common denominators because I can't add these two without a common denominator. Same over here. I need a common denominator. So let's look at the first pair. We have a denominator of 15 and a denominator of 6. What's the common denominator going to be? Well, the lowest common denominator will be a 30. So we're going to have to go back up to a 30 again. So I have a common denominator of 30 for the first two. I don't need a common denominator for all four. I just need the like terms. So this is a common denominator of 30. There's an A. And the 6 is also going to turn into a 30. And the, then the other two, we will do them. We'll, we'll get a common denominator for the constants separately. Numerators. So I have to take 15. To get 15 to a 30, I had to multiply it by 2. I do the same to the numerator, and I get a 16. That back where we were up here, right? We had a 16 over 30. And for the next one, for 6 to get to 30, I multiply by 5. So I multiply the top by 5, so that's a 5. Now over to the constants, their common denominator will be a 6. So I'll put a 6 here, and this one already is a 6. So that's the last one stays 1 6. But the second one, one third, the first one, sorry, the first one, I change it from one third to a six. What do I do to this three to get it to a six? I multiply by two, do the same to the top, I have a two. So I'm going to need to move my work over because I uh, am running out of room. So whenever you run out of room, you don't start writing to the side like this. The only time I would allow that is if you are ready to be at the answer. If your answer was five and you're ready to do that, that would be okay. But we've got some work to show, so I want to have proper form here. And where do I have more room? I probably have more room on the left. Actually, let me erase a little bit of this stuff. If I had a piece of paper, of course, I wouldn't. I would have lots of room, but on this um, PowerPoint slide, I don't. So I'm going to move my question up here like this. Let's fix that arrow. All right, so I rewrote the question, and, and I collected my like terms. 
So my A's are together. Uh, my A's are together right here, and my constants are together right here. So 16A and 5A, that's going to give us 21A. 21A, and I can put my A in the top, or I'll put it in the top, or I could put it to the side. I'll put it in the top here. 21A over 30, and 2 minus 1 is, of course, 1 over 6. I can reduce my 21 over 30 because the numbers, I can both divide 21 and 30 by 3, divide the top and the bottom by 3, and I'm now at my final answer of 7 over 10 A, I'm put my A to the side this time, right? I can put it either to the side or to the top, plus 1 sixth. So there's the answer for um, that complicated question because of the fractions. The distribution isn't that difficult, but because it's fractions, it makes it a lot more work. So, um, of course, you have questions like that in your homework, and when you do, you come back and you look at this one. How did we do this in the lesson? And you use the lesson to help you. Example two, this is our last example. Write an expression for the perimeter of this shape, and then we will simplify the expression. So, first of all, perimeter. Perimeter is what? It's adding up all the lengths of all of the sides. That's what the perimeter is. So there were lines on here, but I don't I don't think they didn't show up. So I'm going to add the lines on right now. So I'm putting uh, one, it's called a hash line there, putting one there, and I'm putting them on all these kind of beveled corners here to show that these are all the same length. So all of the corners, bent in corners there are all x plus 2. The 3x plus 4, so you can add this onto your diagram as well, they should have been there. 3x plus 4, these lengths are all the same as that, so I'm putting two hash lines there. You guys know what a hashtag is? Well, these are hash lines. So these lines get put on, and that should have been on the question. And that would normally be already on the question for you, so that you could do the perimeter. So let's find the perimeter. The perimeter, we'll do A first. Perimeter is equal to all add up the lengths of all sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one point like here. This is going to be my starting point here. So I'm going to make a little mark for myself. This is my start and I'm going to add up all the way around. I'm going to go all the way around adding up all the sides. So first of all, my very first one there after my red mark is an x plus 2. So I could write x plus 2, so don't copy this down, let me just show you. I could write x minus 2 plus 3x plus 4 plus, the next one would be an x minus 2 plus, and I could keep going like this, but really, uh, I'm in grade 9 now, I'm not going to write it out like that. I'm going to uh, figure out how many of those beveled corners, those kind of flattened corners I have, and I'm going to do those first. So look at that first corner where the x plus 2 is get my laser pointer there. There's an x plus 2, x, sorry, x minus 2. How many of these do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we go around so we make sure we don't double count and then we stop here. So we've got four of those. So I'm going to write down four. My perimeter is, I have four of these x minus 2 lengths. And what else have I got in my perimeter? I've got the top length which is 3x plus 4. That's this length here. And I know I have another one here. There's 2, 3, 4. So I have four of those. So I'm going to do the same thing. I've got four of the 3x plus 4 lengths. And that's all part A asked for. It said write an expression for the perimeter of this shape. That's all. That is the expression. Now B says simplify your expression. So my perimeter is equal to, so here we go with the distributing. I'm going to distribute the 4 into the x with multiplication and distribute it into the negative 2. That gives me 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Now I've got to take the 4. Remember the plus goes with it. These two things go together here. That gets multiplied into 3x and it gets multiplied to the 4. That gives me plus 12x plus 16. 
And we have to simplify. So we're looking for like terms here. So how, have I got any other x's? Yes, I do. And for my constants, I've got a minus 8 and a plus 16. So I'm going to rewrite my perimeter expression, collecting like terms. I'm collecting my x's first, 4x plus 12x. And I'm collecting my constants. That is a negative 8 plus 16. So my final expression for the perimeter is 16x plus 8. We don't have any units. If I knew it was centimeters, I would put centimeters after that. I don't have any units, so I'm just going to leave it there. You could also write the word units, but there weren't any given to us in the question, so we really can't clarify. So I hope now you have a really good understanding of the distributive property. We've done it with uh, nested brackets and fractions, so we've made it a little more complicated, but it's all the distributive property.